Ho ho! Movie's greatest injuries! Nobody is an action movie from John Wick writer Derek Kolstad. It tells the story of Hotch Mansell, a former government assassin now living a boring and repetitive suburban life. One night Hotch gets into a fight with the brother of a gangster and ends up having to take on the Russian Mafia in order to protect his family. Director Ilya Nyshula sees the movie as a metaphor for addiction. Hutch is like a man who's been sober for 20 years, going on an all-night bender. But I have another interpretation I'd like to share with you. In my view, Hutch is an unreliable narrator, a fantasist and a daydreamer, and most of the movie exists entirely in his head. And I think I can prove it by the way the movie uses windows. Not windows. Windows. Who the f*** are you? Me? I'm... The movie opens with a montage sequence that shows Hutch living a routine life, where one day is much the same as the next. We see him on the bus, at work and at home, over and over again. On the bus, at work and at home. There are five main action set pieces in the movie. The fight on the bus, the home invasion, the burning of the obchak, the car chase and the final shootout at Hutch's workplace. Put a pin in the obchak and the car chase, we'll come back to that later. The other three are in places that Hutch is familiar with in his daily routine. On the bus, at work and at home. When his home is broken into, Hutch chooses to de-escalate the situation rather than resort to violence, even though he has the drop on a burglar. Interestingly, the idea for the movie comes from when Bob Odenkirk was broken into for real. It's not a good situation to be in. You don't quite know what to do and you wish you'd done more. You always wish you'd done more. After the break-in, he is emasculated by a cop, his neighbour and his in-laws. I also have experienced this moment where the policeman sort of says, I would have done something. And you're like, really? <laughs> I thought I was supposed to keep things cool. Immediately after Hotch's humiliation, we see him staring out of a window. This is an archetypical image of a daydreamer. He then speaks to his brother on a ham radio. I think Hotch is still at the window daydreaming and this conversation is in his head. His brother describes himself as being officially dead, but I think he may in fact be dead for real. When he gets back home we see him again, staring through a window, this time at his family. The obvious symbolism here is that he is disconnected from them and doesn't share in their feelings of domestic bliss. But I think the shot is doing double duty because the next scene is another fantasy. His daughter tells him she has lost her kitty cat bracelet. Hutch thinks the thieves may have grabbed it by mistake while they were taking cash from the bowl. During the burglary, listen to how Hutch describes his watch. What about his watch? Is this worth something? To me it is. So the kitty cat bracelet and the watch, both items worn on the wrist, have no monetary, only sentimental value. When they take the watch from him, he sees the thief's tattoo also worn on the wrist, which provides him with a clue he needs to find them later. I believe that this part of the burglary is a later fabrication by Hutch. In the next scene he is on the bus, framed by the window, the image of a daydreamer again. He goes to his dad's to get a gun and, in a montage sequence, visits several tattoo parlours, looking for a lead on the burglars. In between each visit, we see him back on the bus. It's my contention that Hutch is on the bus constructing these scenarios in his head. He daydreams about catching up to the burglars and recovering his watch, but they don't have the kitty cat bracelet. Later, it turns out that the bracelet was never stolen, as Hutch finds it in his man cave. I suggest that this is where he actually found his watch, that he mistakenly believed it to have been stolen and incorporated it into his fantasy, rewriting it as his daughter's bracelet. We now come to the first major action scene, when the Russian and his gang board the bus. Notice how Hutch first sees them while staring through a window, indicating that he's in another daydream. I'm impressed by how restrained the movie's been. Though there have been several scenes where the action could have kicked off, almost a third of the runtime has been used to develop the characters. After the fight, the montage of Hutch's routine life is briefly reprised, 
ending on a shot of him daydreaming at the window again. In order to keep his fantasy going, he invents the barber character and creates the backstory of Yulian, brother to one of the people he mashed up on the bus. Yulian is a Russian gangster in charge of the Opchak, a common fun held for members of the Estonian and Russian Mafia. He is the equal and opposite of Hutch, unrestrained in his violent impulses, but dreams of escaping to a simpler life. Yulian sends a team to Hutch's home. Hutch sees them arriving while staring through a window, teeing up another fantasy. One of them survives and he tells him a story from his past, about when he was sent to kill an embezzler called Alan. Hutch decides to let him go. A year later he goes to check on Alan. He stands at the window, an outsider looking in at a happy family, feeling dissatisfied with his life as an assassin. This is mirrored by the shot of him looking at his own family, dissatisfied with his life as a suburbanite. Further proving that he is an unreliable narrator, Hutch makes a mistake in his backstory. Alan skimmed about three million bucks from a US military base in Rivolto, Italy. The military base at Rivolto is Italian, not American. The US base in Italy is Casa Maradelli, nearly a hundred miles away. He incorporated Italy into his story because they were talking about it before he went into his daydream. How about we all head to Italy this summer? We've always talked about going back. He has connections to Italy but clearly not to the military. Hutch then steals his neighbour's whip. Earlier we saw his exasperated look while his wife takes their only car and his neighbour boasts about his sweet ride while Hutch is forced to take the bus. When he drives off, the shot is from the direction of Hutch's house. The camera booms up to a shot of the night sky. When it comes down, it's at his dad's residential home but the position of the moon and stars haven't changed. I think this is because Hutch's position hasn't changed. He's still staring out of the window daydreaming. In fact, for the rest of the movie, up until the final scene, we remain in Hutch's daydream. This is just an aside, but in the scene when the two hitmen come for Hutch's dad, I like how the volume lowering on the TV reflects the slow death of the would-be assassin. So that brings us to the Obshack and the car chase. Even though we are deep into Hutch's fantasy, as indicated by him staring out of his dining room window, the action scene at the Obshack is queued up by him staring through his car window. The song choice here is on point. To dream, the impossible dream. After burning down the Obshack, Hutch goes to see Julian. He offers him the opportunity to walk away and live the quiet life he dreams of. This is really Hutch's own choice, to return to his simple suburban existence or to live like Walter Mitty in a world of fantasy. At the beginning of the car chase, the window motif is repeated as Hutch drives past the nightclub, catching Julian's eye through the car's side window, teeing up another action set piece. Four of the five main action scenes begin with Hutch staring out of a window, the car chase and the workplace shootout run into each other, but there is a pause between the two sequences when Hutch and his dad have a brief conversation. When the action resumes, the gangsters appear at a glass door, a door with a window in it. So the Obshack and the car chase don't have parallels in the opening montage because Hutch never physically goes to those places. They are an extension of his daydream in the dining room. The chase scene suggested by his neighbour's car that he eyed enviously and is easily visible from his dining room window. In fact, since the burglary, Hutch hasn't broken his routine. He continues his endless cycle of getting on the bus, going to work, then back home to his family, all while staring out of windows, daydreaming about a more exciting life. The only break comes right at the end of the movie, when Hutch and his wife Becca are viewing a house. Hutch receives a phone call, suggesting he is being called back into action. But when the phone call comes, he is once again staring out of a window. And if you're not convinced yet, I have one final exhibit. It comes from the end of the final shootout, when Hutch kills Julian. Time. 
take a look at what he's holding to protect himself from the blast. Thanks for letting me pretend I was someone else. And thank you for listening to me probably talking bollocks about nobody. If you enjoyed the show, do me a solid and gently depress the like button. Subscribe if you can be asked, and join me on Twitter where I post reviews of all the new movies I've been watching. Don't forget, you can get four free months of NordVPN, but not from me, I'm not sponsored. Thanks for watching, and I'll smell you later. You want to go see a movie then? I only go and see foreign films.